Welcome back to Hernando Hot Rods. On this app, um, I plan on getting these doors painted black on the interior around this uh, seal here. That'll be the cutoff line and then the rest of green. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick blocking on these two sections here that are actually visible. Everything else is covered by the door panel. So once we get those covered and, and clear, we can flip the door over, start blocking that. I got one already half-ass blocked that I just gotta recheck some things on. It might need another uh, coat of uh, primer. But besides that, I got the Nova covered right now just to avoid any chances of overspray. And since the last video, we got tail lights and the cove molding going all the way around. Starting to look legit. So I gotta get to block in on these doors and I'll put you guys in time lapse. Also, forgot to mention, got the shop pup down here. So on the passenger side, I just had a couple of little dings on the kicker side. And then the, I guess there was a little dent there. That was probably unnecessary, but I just did it anyway. Um, driver's side, as I anticipated, a little bit more rough. Um, had two large dents here. A um, couple little, I think this was a groove at one point. I think this, yeah, and then I, I primed over it and then I cut it down. But I think this was a line. Ooh. Hopefully the filler primer will fix what, if there is any imperfections. And this was a large dent that I tried hammering out from the inside and just reducing the amount of filler that I was using. But right now, these are gonna get blocked um, after I lay primer again before laying color tomorrow. So I'm just gonna hit these two strips here because that's where all the dents were. Um, gonna hit these two strips with filler primer. I'll block them and then put them in 320 and 400 before I lay color tomorrow on the inside. Okay, so we're working on the driver door. Um, not sure if these are highs. I'm gonna hammer them down a little bit. Maybe lay some poly, see if the polyester will be removed when I block it. But this is no bueno. This ugly girl right here, you can see the texture because I can't hit it with the block because it's a low. So, I'm gonna have to lay some polyester in that and block it. I'll do the same with those. And, but besides that, the driver door is pretty good, even down here. Nothing crazy. I gotta hit these edges a little bit because there's some texture there. This top side is perfect. Uh, this is a high because I had to weld this corner because um, where the metal overlaps. There was a gap there, so I filled it, ground it down, but there's just a high metal, but that's flat. But it's looking pretty good. Um, might also tap these down a little bit just to be cautious of it, and make sure there's no screw ups. So now I'm gonna lay the passenger's door and guide coat and start blocking my life away again. Um, you're probably tired of watching it. I'm tired of blocking it, but 
moral of the story is blocking's never done, just keeps going. So we're on to the next, then we're gonna do the front clip, then we're gonna do the fiberglass, which who knows, those tend to be super wavy. I'll probably just make a separate video. I got a glass tack deck lid over there, but back to work, let's do this. Got most of this blocked down. I got a low spot here. These are just a little bit of cut throughs. I got some low texture here. And on these two points, I think that's the same thing on the top half of this point. Uh, probably just from the way that this edge gets bent over. Um, I still gotta do this. I had a, a deep scratch. Something must have knocked into it. Um, I gotta hit this with the with the round fell over there. Uh, block that flat part. Same thing with the round here and the round here. And then down here, just hit the flat edge. I believe this, yeah, this corner fell before and got crunched in. It fell off of this saw or so actually. But uh, so that's, you can see where I had to bend it back. There's probably some lows, definitely some lows. You see little notches in the primer or just the metal that's underneath the primer. So gonna block that, see what kind of disaster is laying under there and move on. Got the black base coat laid right now i'm just gonna be masking off the inside of the panel i got the tape running across that um that seal seam i got a uh, low adhesive 3m green tape underneath and then the stronger stuff on top that way i don't peel any of the base coat up and i'm gonna do the same thing on the passenger door and then we're gonna spray the green along the door jam and, I, and the back side of this post rail. So I'm gonna put you on a time lapse and send it. Got one door untaped, still base coat. Uh, no clear on it yet. The green is so dark, but I guess the camera's picking that up pretty good. flip these doors open over um, last or uh, two days ago I hit them with another two coats of primer after blocking them so now I'm gonna guide coat and re-block them to double check everything make sure everything is super smooth and flat so then we can lay some color on this thing so I'm gonna get to blocking again and get these doors ready
started blocking the uh, body line. Look how crispy that thing is. Sheesh. Looking good so far. I'm gonna keep cutting my way down and then I'll worry about the top half. Got a couple cut throughs here, but the edges always tend to be higher. I'm uh, probably just leave those alone because they're cutting evenly with the rest of the panel. So it always happens where the edges get exposed. So I'm gonna keep hammering away at it. Passenger side door is completely done. Everything's checking out, it's completely smooth. Um, any black that you see left on the guide coat will uh, get removed when it goes into, when I hit it with the DA with 320 and 400 before painting. On to the next, I'll save you guys the agony of <laughs> watching that one. So I'm gonna hammer this out real quick and we'll get to laying some base coat. Okay, so it's a couple days later. Um, as you saw, I made this custom contraption to hold my Vapo rust. Um, this is what that piece used to look like. Like rusted garbage. It's got dog hair on it. I don't even know why. But. So I've had this sitting in here for about 24 hours and all that corrosion is completely gone. Some pitting in the heavy areas, but 360, even inside the channel where it was really bad because it was sitting behind the felt piece, super clean. So I need to find a way to dip this top half of the rail because there's uh, some good garbage in there. If not, I'll just clean it out with a wire wheel, but I'd really like to use this stuff because it seems super efficient. So I'm gonna drop the next one, as I just showed you. Uh, I'll pull the, the old ass felt out of it and put that in the custom contraption with the evapo rust and get that cleaned up and then we can start rebuilding these vent windows and install them in the doors that are freshly painted which are out here. I have them just cooking in the sun before I uh, get ready to wet sand them but here we are looking pretty sweet. Not too bad. looks like I just wiped them down to get all the clear coat dust off. I got a couple of little pieces of trash that I got to get rid of with um, the 3000 I think. I might go over a little bit more with uh, 2000 just in a couple spots. But you can see how uniform everything is. It looks like it's been frosted over. You can see the, the shininess, you can see the reflection of the tent.
the doors look like after 5,000 grit. They have not been buffed yet. Came out really nice. You can see every detail in the tent above. Same thing goes for the other side. Super smooth and flat. Now time to hit them with some compound and polish. Got one door buffed out. You can see how much better the clarity is. And then this is what the 7000 looks like. Still very clean, but you can see the haze around the edges here. And it just has like a little cloudiness to it, whereas this is just HD. So I'm gonna get this other door done and then we'll start mounting these things. Doors back on, starting to look like a car again. All shined up. As you saw, I got the door handles on, starting to come together. I just put the little bumpers in on the inside. I haven't done the latches or the body side of the latches yet, but at least now it's not metal on metal contact. Um, I have this piece of trim that I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna rivet these on. I think they took little uh, like 5 16 screws from the factory, but I'm gonna rivet them and then seam seal. That way no water gets towards the uh, door seal, but they go in there like so. So I'm gonna put you guys on time-lapse and we're gonna hammer this out. I don't know if I recorded how this window channel came out. Um, it's bare steel, the vapor rust did its job, just some pitting from the corrosion, but that's ready for some pour 15 and then to have the felt laid back in it. And then as far as this stainless goes, the way I decided I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna tape from this, this bend here out and then lay the seam sealer from that line inward towards the rivets. That way from the outside, you can't, you won't visibly see the black seam sealer poking through. If all goes to plan, it might change when it gets squished down, it might spread to the right. But if anything, it would be minimal, minimally viewed. So I'm gonna get after it and get these riveted on.
Hell yeah, boys. That plan worked out pretty damn well. I don't even see, I don't see any seam sealer. All you see is the stainless all the way up because I taped it off from that line, maybe a hair there, but that's good enough for the girls we date. And then on the inside, clean rivets all the way up, all the way down. Um, doesn't look like the seam seal went past the stainless. Maybe a little bit down here. That's it. But that actually worked out pretty good the way I had it drawn in my head. Came out clean. Let me close the door. Hell yeah. The second one on driver's side. Uh, this one was more of a pain in the ass. Um, I had to remove some of the seam sealer that had already dried on the, from when I did the top drip rail. Um, it was just a little too high on this trim here because I, I had done the seam sealer with this stainless on. So I had to just scrape a little bit of the top half off because I couldn't get it slid up enough for the rivet holes or bolt holes, however you adhere them to line up so I had to fight that a little bit but came out pretty damn nice looks good and from what I can tell on the front there's no seam sealer visible so everything is between that crease and towards the rivets so taping everything off paid off and that looks good. And now we can move on to, I think we're gonna try and put the column in next and get some functioning steering again. So now that we're done laying the trim, I got this hole right here that the column originally slides through, not originally, just the way it was prior to paint. Um, Usually there's a huge cutout here on these Novas that has a big rubber piece that fits in there. I just made it all solid and I use this piece here. It's um, Where's Machine and that's the part number, number WM102 and that is the same. The ID on this is just a hair bigger than this so that the piece slides through for this Motion Raceworks DIY column. And as far as the column goes, um, this you just cut to length and then you put your tube clamp on the end. And I just added a, a it's got a little bit of an angle to it, but um, just a tube there. I welded that and then that bolts to the bottom of my dash because that's how it was from factory. So I'm utilizing all the same structure and um, this piece keeps the bottom in place and it keeps a nice tight seal so nothing can melt or fire could get through. I'm trying to eliminate as many holes as possible. I only have that to master and that'll eventually be the wiper blade motor that goes there. So I'm gonna get this bolted on. We're gonna slide the column through and then I have this uh, Flaming River double D joint that um, I originally had set for my Mustang 2 front end, which I no longer have. And that has a shorter stem. This one for the Fox body uh, rack and pinion is longer. So we're gonna cut this stainless to length. But first things first, let's get everything mounted up. Got the eyelet in place. So now we can slide the column through and bolt the column to the under dash. And then we can start working on our joints. Just got the column in. That's all bolted up. And this is the bracket that is also connected to the dash. So that is super sturdy. And then uh, this is my steering wheel with the Motion Raceworks horn button. And then this is a Joe's um, racing products wheel. And that 
That's her right there. Got the steering all in. Let's give her a ripsy. Oh yeah. My uh my bump steer kit is still super loose, so so we got steering again, got the column and the uh flaming river stainless u-joints and all that stuff going to the rack and pinion in there got this top drip rail looking good so next video i'm hoping and the doors look phenomenal also i also put the handles on them um so next video i plan on doing the the fenders and we should be getting the majority of the glass probably all the glass in except for the windshield i gotta order that and that's gonna probably take forever to get here but um Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching Hernando Hot Rods. Peace.